Hey everybody on YouTube, it's been a long week, and you know, tonight I really just think I'm going to watch a movie. Let's see what DVDs I got. Back to the Future, Band of Brothers, hey. Castaway. keep watching this I'm gonna fall asleep. I wish there was a video game version of this with less sadness and Tom Hanks. Today I'm playing Cast Away the Video. Today I'm playing Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep is a game being developed by Beam Team Games. It was released to Steam Early Access in January of 2015. And if you don't know what Steam Early Access is, uh, I don't know, look it up. The concept. In Stranded Deep, you play as a man in the middle of a business flight, who after drinking one too many martinis, sits down and then watches in terror as his plane crashes mid-flight. In a dramatic underwater escape, he manages to survive and is forced to live off the limited resources of deserted islands, old military forts, and shipwrecks. The way you play is up to you, and as of this review, the only condition the game ends on is death. Review. Okay, let's jump into the review. Just to be clear, this is a review of the 0.03.h3 build, which in normal people talk means this game isn't done and the review does not reflect a finished product. Graphics. The visuals in Stranded Deep are one of its strongest points. The game has a great visual atmosphere and some beautiful sunrises and sunsets. The textures are nice and all the 3D models are pretty well done. Of course, for something being developed by a small team, you're not going to get AAA graphics and that's okay. This game makes up for that in its simple yet pleasing presentation, and they utilize the Unity game engine's lighting very well. Aside from numerous graphical glitches and some odd lighting bugs, the game really has some impressive visuals considering its low system requirements. Some people have reported issues with performance, even on high-end machines. And I'll admit, I had to tweak my settings for probably 30 minutes to get the game running well. But in all, I really enjoy the graphics in this game. Though simple, they really seem to fit in the world. Nothing feels out of place in Stranded Deep, and I'm excited to see they're utilizing speed tree integration and introducing more island variety to the game in the future. Just as a side note, I'm also excited to see the eventual Oculus Rift support. I own a dev kit too, and I feel like this game would be great for an immersive VR experience. Sound and music. Stranded Deep really doesn't have any music, besides a few minimalist tracks that play during events like when sharks are nearby, and some other seemingly random places. And that's perfect. The lack of music really highlights the realism and atmosphere of the game. However, it does also bring up some issues with its very repetitive sound effects. Traveling from island to island paddling along got on my nerves after hearing the same swooshing paddle noise for minutes on end. And though the sounds are high quality and recorded well, it definitely leaves room for improvement. Overall the sound is good, and besides its tendency for repetition, this is a strong start from the developers. Gameplay. As always, gameplay is the real meat of the review. I'll be doing three sections focused on exploration, crafting, and survival. Exploration. Most of Stranded Deep revolves around exploring a seemingly never-ending ocean of islands, shipwrecks, and occasionally military forts, though the latter is more rare. The game offers no maps or waypoints, and you must depend on your own intuition on how to traverse the vast ocean. This is one of the best parts of the game in my opinion. It creates interesting debates on things like whether to leave an island behind or make it your permanent home. Eventually, navigation can get easier if you find a randomly placed compass, which had me creating handmade maps of all the islands around me. Though the main area types you find are very similar each time you find them, the simple feeling of wandering into the unknown is great. I hope in the future the developers can create some more varied and special locations to give the game more replayability, because right now the exploration is good, but it can become mundane pretty quickly. Crafting Crafting in Stranded Deep is a unique physical-based system. The system is based around crafting supplies being close together to form structures and tools. In theory this system looks and sounds good, but the execution is very rough around the edges. The game offers no in-game help besides a very dinky crafting tutorial on the plane involving a cocktail. 
This caused me some early frustration as I had lots of crafting items, but because I didn't place them right next to the right object or group them correctly, I couldn't make what I wanted. It's a unique system that once you get down adds some immersion and isn't just a boring crafting menu, but the developers need to really work on how to make the system more obvious and player friendly. You shouldn't have to look at the wiki of a game 5 minutes in because you can't figure out how to make the most basic items for survival. Survival. Stranded Deep calls itself a survival simulator. I personally think survival game is a better way to put it. The survival elements are cool, but don't exactly simulate surviving the elements. To survive in Stranded Deep, you must manage three stats, health, hunger, and hydration. These stats are managed by a sort of smartwatch called BP that shows you each of these stats and also shows you the time of day, temperature, and how many days you've survived. I actually think this is a very clever and immersive way to handle a survival system. It fits in the game and doesn't require a clunky user interface, though it's not all great. The hunger and water stats are easy enough to understand. When they get low, find some crab or fish to eat, or find some coconut milk or fresh water to drink. The health stat is where the game doesn't explain itself. Finding out why you're in poor health is sometimes difficult to understand. Sometimes it's poisoning, sometimes it's broken bones or injury. Though there are visual signs, these don't give you any real indication of how to fix the issue, and if you don't catch the hint it gives you, you won't see it again as far as I can tell. It's an interesting system, but just like crafting, the game needs to help the player understand it. Only a slightly more complex optional tutorial could really help give players the tools they need to play the game. Withholding information about how to play the game isn't difficulty, it's lazy game design. Conclusion So would I recommend Stranded Deep? That's a tough question. I've enjoyed my time with this game, and it really pulled me in. It made me feel like leaving my island base to explore was a big decision, and all without fancy dialogue or cutscenes. But on the other hand, this happened. Awesome, I just finished the motorboat. It only took me like three hours to find all the parts and survive it. Well, let me just save real quick and uh, go get a drink. Alright, loading this up. What the fuck? Where'd the motorboat go? Bugs like that reminded me this game is in alpha and is going to break. As someone who becomes invested in the world my character builds for themselves, having an item disappear I worked to create by collecting all the parts for several hours was extremely frustrating, and with that I'll say it was a fun game to check out, and if it looks like a game that you'd like in the future, maybe it's worth taking the risk and supporting the developers. But otherwise, I'd wait for this one to leave early access. It simply doesn't have enough content right now. Hey everybody, that was my video for this week. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. You can leave a comment in the comments section. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. Try to have another next week. See ya.